to another episode of 1923 Main Street. Home of the Disney Travel Podcast with the latest Disney travel news. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellabratic. And I'm Amelia Bellabratic. And today there's new things coming to Country Bear Jamboree, an editorial rant on what the current Imagineers are doing to stray from the Walt Disney World vision and Disneyland's Lunar New Year celebration. Yes, it's Country Bear Jamboree time now. It's closing pretty soon on January 27th to be exact, but it's going to reopen later this summer. So they say. So they say. No specific month or time or anything as the all-new Country Bear Musical Jamboree. What if they just completely make it a Zootopia Jamboree? What would you do? That is not what they said at D23. So this was first announced at D23 last summer. They changed their minds. So the Country Bears will be returning with an all-new show that pays tribute to Opry-style shows from Nashville. Good old grand old Opry. They promise, I like this, a few Easter eggs will be in the show. And they did promise a familiar tune. Will so. it be Davy Crockett? Will it be Bear Tracks? As long as people don't have to learn a whole new set, I think they'll be good. People will, because the bears are singing new and reinterpreted Disney songs in different country genres. Well then. Did you know what kind of cool history Country Bear Jamboree has? Mm, I'm going to go with no. It has a really interesting history and something we all wish happened. So Walt Disney originally came up with this idea in the 1960s when he was planning to build a ski resort. (laughs) He even had a name and plans the Mineral King Ski Resort Project in California. It was going to be in the Sequoia National Forest area. I personally think that they should revisit the ski resort idea. I know. Could you DVC imagine? DVC ski resort. Let's get on it. It would obviously have a DVC wing Let's by Let's get now. on it, Disney. Yeah. So we could have been flying to California to go skiing at the Disney Mineral King Ski Put Resort. Put out there. I pitched to you Aspen. And he was having this. That's where he thought Country Bear Jamboree was going to live. So he's going to have a little attraction as part of the ski resort. Of course, the resort was never built, as we know. But the Country Bear's idea was revived by Walt uh, for Walt Disney World. He never got to see it, but it was one of the most popular marquee attractions when Magic Kingdom opened in 1971. And I loved it right out of the gate. I mean, it has a certain quality that keeps drawing people back because it is, as Disney World is, over 50 years old now. And there are still people sitting in those theaters for a show that for a long time was relatively dated. And it was really long. So, you know, a few years ago, they shortened it to 18 minutes, I think, from 33 or something like that. Which is still long. Yeah, they sort of cut it in half almost. It's still like a chunk out of your day to go and see it. It's going to be interesting. To see now, it was 18, I think it's around 18 minutes, something like that right now. Will it be shorter even as this new one? Will it be a 15 minute show? That's what I predict, Probably. around 15 minutes. I don't think it'd be much shorter than that. Will it have the same characters? Are the sun bonnets, the three sister triplets going to be there? It is definitely a nice break in the AC, sort of a carousel of progress type vibe over on in Frontierland on the hot summer days. So I don't think it should be too short because then there's just too much in and out to actually have the show going on. So long story short, for anyone traveling over the next little while until at least summer, you're not going to have Rock and Roller Coaster and you're not going to have Country Bear Jamboree. I think Rock and Roller Coaster is going to be missed more because Country Bear Jamboree doesn't usually have lineups. But I love that it's kept there. I love that they've kept the history, which is going to lead into my rant. Yes. And this is really annoying to me, and I'm, I still can't believe it, to be honest. I still hope they're going to change it. But here's my rant. Interestingly, jumping out at me in the note of this Disney news story is that Disney continues to refer to this area, including Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is the main point, as Frontierland. So they talk about when Tiana's Bayou Adventure joins Frontierland, it is not 
part of the frontier people. <laughs> Unfortunately, Disney Imagineers are essentially ignoring the trademark theming of Walt Disney and his parks. You know, the Disney difference was so much around these details, right? That the lands are themed right down to the ground changing and Walt wanting you to be immersed in themes. Every bit of details the Imagineers went. Now we've got the bayou in Frontierland and this current group of Imagineers who honestly I think are useless, I can't wait till they go away, are just ignoring that and we're getting the first step towards Universal Park which is ignoring any sort, you know, great fun park, but theming, eh, not so much anymore. So a lazy Imagineer, not a good Imagineer. Mm -hmm. And I wish Bob Iger would please take a look at the lack of creative spark and ingenuity coming out of the Disney Imagineering department right now, because this is shameful. It would have been so easy just to call it the Bayou. I, yeah, I would say the little details are starting to slip slightly, which does Give the impression of a little bit more relaxed, less intense theming in Magic Kingdom specifically, which is where the lands are, I feel, the most popular or the most important, at least in my opinion. I think it's still really strong in the other parks, like Galaxy's Edge is very isolated. But I like to think about what would happen if, well, now they put something from a different movie that they own randomly in Galaxy's Edge. And we're like, oh, no, 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 no. It's, it's still Galaxy's Edge. We're not. We're just not going to acknowledge that this other ride's here and completely not themed. I feel like people would get a lot more mad at this than they are at Frontierland, even though I like to think it's sort of the same thing. But for me personally, it's just sort of the small details that I wish they would pay slightly more and attention to. And it's such to. an easy one to address. Just make it the bayou. It's at the end already. Yeah. There's still a pathway to Big Thunder that can be Frontierland. They could have called it the edge of the frontier, like they're saying behind Big Thunder. I mean, I don't get why they are messing, like, just... An, I mean, if it was up to me... It's a small detail, but it's an important detail is what I'm getting at. If it was up to me, I would have had them make a new movie focused around that ride to have a new ride and a new movie opening at well, the same a, time. that's a whole different... To maximize, <laughs> but I'm just saying, because then you could make it frontier-themed. If you wanted to do something that takes place in the frontier time period, you could still make it diverse. It doesn't have to be like the same thing that it was before. You can make it totally different. You can make it whatever you want. I just think it would fit with a theming a little bit better or quite simply call it something different. Just don't. And yeah, and I, I'm going to head off say it's anybody frontier when it's not. <laughs> and exactly. And anyone who's going to try to give the argument, well, that was the frontier of that time. Well, then we can have space themed rides in there because that's the next frontier. No, frontier land in Walt Disney terms is Old West. That's what it is. It is not the new frontiers of under the sea or outer space or saying that the bayou in the 1920s was a new frontier. That is not what Frontierland has been to this point. Now, I, yeah, I love the vibe of 1920s New Orleans, but it's got, not the vibe of the, the frontier. Why didn't they call it the bayou? Why didn't they just make that area the bayou? It's at the end of the park. I don't get it. So I'm just get annoyed I mean, personally. There's because New Orleans Square in Disneyland, right? Exactly. There's Liberty Square. They didn't just call it so why didn't they Fantasyland. Just... <laughs> I don't know. That's why I find this so lazy. It's such an easy fix. It would have at least maintain some integrity of what separates Disney from Universal. It just appears to me as if it's not an isolated incident because I'm thinking forward with all of this beyond Big Thunder Mountain nonsense that they're doing. It seems very Pixar related back there or at least more so animated, at least what they're doing right now. And it kind of worries me that they're making it more California Adventure, Pixar Pier, and less its own world and more the world of their movies, which I understand they're monopolizing off of their movies, obviously, but I think this is sort of just the first step. So because they're focusing on that, they're not trying to keep intact the integrity of something that will go away in a couple of years anyways. Yes. So there you have it. That That's is our, word. and that is the rant. Amelia's Tries to pull me back sometimes, but I know it's a small thing, but it's an annoying thing. And I just find these Imagineers lazy. I don't like a lot of the stuff they've done. And this is something they didn't do. It's a minor detail, but for me, that's the problem. Like it would just be, it would just be so easy to not call it that. Just make it the bayou. It, just say a different, just say a different word. You don't even have to change the signage. Just call it a different word. 
on whenever you put out the next edition of the map, the only just type thing in the buy. Ha- like the only thing they'd have to change, and maybe not even depending on how you did it, is the train station. But how easy is it to change the name of that? I mean, it appears to me to be an easy fix. Maybe there's something going on, you know, behind the scenes in the corporate world that I don't know about. Totally possible. But from a consumer standpoint, it appears to be a very easy change, especially when they're redoing the whole ride anyways. So I still hope that future Imagineers will write this wrong. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not holding out that this group will do it. So... That's the rant. Let us know what you think. I'll do a little poll on this this week, whether or not you even care. Who cares? Let Disney become universal. It's not so much, uh, you know, theming and the details. They don't matter anymore. I mean, universal has theming. It's just off and on, whereas Disney, for exactly. the most part, was consistently well themed and they were really focused on sight lines. So when it sort of slip, it's not to say that universal is not themed at all and that it's Six Flags or wherever, like... No, but Walt Disney created the theme park. Exactly. He literally literally invented it with Disneyland and he and the whole point of it was this unbending attention to detail. Well, eh, they don't do that anymore. And I think And the, it would have been easy to, so yeah. it's lazy. That's why I say it's lazy. It's going to be the thing with Universal where for example Harry Potter and and you take the train to Hogsmeade to Diagon Alley, all of that is really nicely themed. All of the buildings and the props from the movies look fantastic, but then you're over on, you know, Rip Ride Rocket or there was the Hulk Smash ride and it sort of blends together in some areas. So it's just not as consistent as Disney was. And it seems that they're sort of veering towards that direction, which is working. Definitely agree. Now, to close this out, let's quickly go over to Disneyland's Lunar New Year foodie guide. We're not going to go through the whole thing because I just want to point something else out that will be a props to Disneyland. Last week, we talked about the foodie guide for the Festival of the Arts Festival, which was pretty light and not very compelling. Holy cow, when I look at something that's also a short festival in Disneyland, the Lunar New Year, January 23rd to February 18th, this foodie guide is unbelievable. There is so much new stuff, we can't even remotely come close to talking about it, but we are going to do right now our rapid fire top picks. If you are lucky enough to attend this, here's what we think you should be eating and or drinking, because let me tell you, the mocktail and cocktail selections yeah, are crazy. Lots to choose from for either palate. So definitely check it out if you are there. Well, I'm going to kick it off right now at Prosperity Bow and Buns, the Brewery X Grapefruit Panda Pool Party Bamboo Rice Lager. Definitely a top pick for me to check out at the festival. Then I'm going over to Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, where there's one I know you love. The Bulgogi Pizza, which is marinated beef, spicy corn, cheese sauce topped with green onion, and it is available by slice, or you can get the whole thing if you want, from January 23rd to 29th. Yeah, can you imagine a marinated beef and spicy corn pizza? I can't wait to try this. Yeah, it has cheese sauce on it, but who cares? That's part of the fun. Over at Lamplight Lounge... There are some spicy Dan Dan noodles, crispy pork belly, and noodles with spicy Szechuan sauce and more. That is a definite try for me. And while I'm there, I'll pick up the Lunar New Year cocktail, which is <laughs> Han Soju Ancho Reyes and Ancho Chili Liqueur, Dragon Fruit Syrup, Lemon Juice, Mezcal, and Fire Water Bitters with Mint. I mean, this just sounds crazy to me. It sounds like a lot of flavor. A lot of flavor, sort of a almost a Mexican-Asian mix. So I definitely want to check that out. And then over at Studio Catering, another one I know you will love. The Char Siu Style Ribs. Now, these are braised pork ribs with Asian-inspired glaze, and it's topped with roasted peanuts and scallions and it just from their promotional picture at least just looks very juicy and well flavored and like something i really want to try and this is a favorite of ours you might not remember but from skipper canteen in the magic kingdom so i'm curious to see how this stacks up if it's better worse or similar another cocktail over at craftsman bar now this the thing i love this festival's all disneyland i mean the core of it takes place in california adventure But here we are at the Grand Californian with the Moon Dragon cocktail. So premium soju, Saint-Germain elderflower liqueur, anything with Saint-Germain I like. Hennessy VS, cognac, cherry juice, plum bitters, Luxardo, which is a maraschino cherry liqueur. A lot going on there. Again, these are just sort of flavorful packed things. I mean, and if you're not interested in the super Asian style, more dish-like foods, there's a lot of good snacks also. There's 
a ton of different churro selections. I mean, personally, the strawberry green tea churro, which is green tea, cinnamon, sugar, dusted with churro, strawberry cream, and freeze-dried strawberries. And that's at Tearing Treats. But tons of different churros, different little pies, and more finger food things if you're not so much into the dish foods to check out also. And dish foods, uh, if you want something in downtown Disney, my top pick would be to go to the Naples restaurant bar. There's the Ban Mi pizza, another crazy pizza, Neapolitan dough, mozzarella, marinated pork, pickled oh, carrots, yeah. and daikon radish, raw jalapeno, cilantro, Vietnamese mayo, chili sauce. This is going to be one fun pizza to try. And then don't forget while you're there, get the Dragon's Breath cocktail, whiskey, again, elderflower liqueur, triple sec, simple syrup, Garnished with tangerine and then smoked. Anything that I like, uh, smoke cocktails, you know, I'm willing to try anyone. So yeah. check out our blog post at 1923mainstreet.com yeah. for the full list because it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, even the Dragon Tail mocktail at Tortilla Joe's also looks delicious. Same, yeah. There's... Same sort of deal, just. No alcohol. No alcohol. So that's what I mean. They've got really one of the best things. So again, maybe some laziness with the Festival of the Arts menu, but cross the way at Disneyland. Disneyland is picking up the slack. So happy Asian New Year, because this is incredible. All right, there you have it. That is the news for this week. Thank you for listening. As always, follow along on social media at 1923 Main Street. We'll see you again next week. Have a magical day. Bye-bye.